Yes, cardiogenic shock is really an ominous uh, complication following uh, acute myocardial infarction. Since early 2000, mortality remains really high and there's nothing that has a really demonstrated a benefit to improve the outcomes after this complication. That's why I think it's, it's needed. It's a, 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 an unmet need to, to uh, the, the, the treatment of this, of this complication. And that's why we are thinking of trying to demonstrate uh, that there is something that could benefit patients from, from this complication. Yeah. Current option, when you have an acute myocardial infarction, and a, a cardiac shock complicating this uh, acute myocardial infarction, you have to revascularize the patient. Is the only treatment that demonstrated the benefit in those patients. But apart from that, there's nothing that has really demonstrated the benefit. What you are doing, of course, is give inotropic support and vasopressors, uh, typically uh, dopamine or uh, no, 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 no. Nor adrenaline, which is best uh, that, uh, as compared to, uh, to dopamine, and revascularization. And now uh, we are trying to demonstrate whether mechanical circuitry support may be of beneficial. But so far, we don't have any uh, new uh, device uh, that demonstrated a benefit. That's why we try to demonstrate that something works in this, in this scenario. The ECMO is, in a, uh, is a system uh, that supports the heart. It's a mechanical circulatory support device that gives this, uh, or extracts blood from the, from the artery and sends it to the, to, the, uh, to, the, to the vein and uh, og uh, gives oxygen to the blood. So then leaves the heart, uh, let's say, quiet to uh, help the recover from the acute uh, myocardial infarction. So this is a, a, a system that could be of benefit because uh, uh, not only support the heart, but also give oxygen to the body. In a randomized fashion, uh, there's nothing on ECMO. There are registries, there are uh, small trials and uh, demonstrate that may be of benefit, but really in a randomized fashion with a, a power uh, uh, um, trial, there's nothing up to date. Mm -hmm. All the mechanical circulatory support devices has complications. That's, that's the, the main issue. That's why it's difficult to demonstrate benefit, but you are providing, you are implanting a device in a patient who is in a really frail situation, clinical condition, and you may induce complications that really favors the fatal, or fatality of the patient. So there are complications leading to the uh, vascular access and also to the uh, uh, um, uh, perforation of a structure. So you, you may have uh, bleedings and, 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 and sepsis, etc. then really May, may create some uh, co complication in a, in a really pa in a patient that is real in a real uh, bad condition. The Euroshock uh, trial was aimed to demonstrate whether the implantation of the ECMO produces a benefit in patients with cardiogenic shock complicating acute myocardial infarction. This was a randomized trial comparing the use of ECMO versus a standard conservative treatment and the use of ECMO as early as possible following primary uh, coronary intervention. This is important. Uh, so the idea was to treat the patient with primary PCI, which is the, the, the treatment you have to do in acute myocardial infarction. And then if the patient remain in shock after primary PCI, then you randomize uh, to use or not to use ECMO in this patient. The findings, are, and unfortunately, we cannot, uh, we could not demonstrate, uh, uh, or we cannot finish the trial because of the COVID-19 pandemic. This was really our main limitation. You know that in the during COVID-19 pandemic, we had to use ECMO in many patients to, and this was really halted the inclusion of patients for more than one year in many countries, and. Because of that, 
we had to stop the recruitment at the, uh, when we had just 35 patients included because of that. And then this was a, a project uh, funded by the European Commission and um, the European Con Commission did not grant it an extension of the trial. So we had to stop because of lack of fundings with just 35 patients. So this was the first limitation. And with that, we cannot, we cannot draw definite conclusions on the results. Having said that, the preliminary data we can uh, share with you is that there is a numerically benefit, a numerically reduction in all-cause mortality at 30 days by the use of ECMO in this highly complicated population. So even with 35 patients, the results are promising. Of course, uh, we cannot draw definite conclusions. We have to wait for other trials currently ongoing that's going to be presented later this year at ESC uh, that will probably will shed light on the, on, the, on the benefit of ECMO. But at least the results we have, uh, we are going to present uh, in, in two days here at the, uh, in PCR, are promising, are reassuring about the use of ECMO in this clinical context. Yes, we cannot say with our data, but my feeling is that it's going to be a, a real option in the future. The point is when to use it, uh, the timing. I think that the, the crucial thing here is not whether to use it or not to use it, is when do we have to use it? Before PCI, immediately after PCI, according to the outcome after primary PCI, which I think is, is, the, is the, the best option, but this is probably the, the, the key question here, when to use it, not whether do we have to use it or not.